Hello, my name's Mark and I am Geekcode Tutor. I'm here again with Practical Machinist today to continue our series of Program in the Bush on a CNC lathe. So before we've covered how to program the header section, the rough tone and the finish tone. So today we're going to look at center drilling and peck drilling our bore for this bush. Okay, so let's make a start. So we're gonna start off with the center drill and I'm using the N number N3 as a call for this part of the program and an operator note in brackets there saying what the operation is. So this is our safety line. We've seen this many times before during these last three lessons on this subject. So I'm just gonna go over it quickly. So our G54 is our working shift datum. I've currently got it set to the front face of the part. So our front face, is on Z0 and the center line is X0. Our G21 puts us into the metric measuring system. G80 turns off any active cycles. Now this will become important later on in this video. And G40 is our cutter compensation. This removes any cutter compensation that may be active. So if we stop halfway through the roughing cycle, for example, and then we start on a drilling cycle, then that cutter compensation will be canceled. And finally, G97, which puts our spindle into revs per minute mode. So I'm flowing through this rather quickly as we've already covered this in previous lessons. So we're gonna do a tool call next. So T0303 is tool free, offset free. And we use an MO6, which is our automated tool change, which will spin the turret around and put the center drill on the center line, ready to cut. So MO3, turns our spindle on in a clockwise direction and our S value here is the RPMs. So we're setting it to a thousand RPM. So now with everything set up and our spindle running and our tool ready, we're now going to rapid it into position. So I'm gonna wrap it into five millimeters away from that front face of our part and we're coming down to X 0.0. Now I'm also putting on coolant at this point with M08. Now we're using five millimeter clearance here because on this next line, we're going to wrap it in, still with GO active, to one millimeter off the face. Now I like to do this across two lines and not just wrap it straight in to one millimeter off the face. So when we're running it through on single block, we have time to react if there is a problem at this stage. So it would also tell us if our tool is set up right. So I like to wrap it in with a little bit more clearance at step one, then another step where I wrap it closer to the part. So with our rapid move done and our tool in position, we can now feed into our part and start cutting material. So we're using G01 for our linear feed rate command. And Z minus 3.5 will take our center drill in to cover about three quarters of that taper on the center drill. Now I find this is a sweet spot with center drills. We don't want to go the full depth of the center drill and we don't want to go too shallow. So as we're using a number two center drill here, I find 3.5 millimeter depth is perfect for our needs. And we're using a feed rate of 0.08 millimeters per revolution here. So with our center drill drilled, and we can now wrap it out to a safe distance. So I'm wrapping out to five millimeters of our data position there on the front face of our part. So G00, our rapid travel command, and Z5 will bring our tool out of the material to a safe distance. So once our tool is at a safe distance, we can now send it home. So G53 is our machine datum. So this is usually where we do our tool change. It's our X0, Z0 position of the machine when it's at home. Now I've changed the Z here to Z minus 210 millimeters. Now this is purely a personal preference. Um, if we are using large tools in there, such as parting off blades that stick out maybe too far, I don't want any collisions with that sub spindle. Now, as you may have seen on many subspindles, certainly most I have worked with, there's always been tool marks on that subspindle where someone's done a tool change over the subspindle and a long tool has collided. So by adding Z minus 210 millimeters here, that's the center point of travel across my lathe. That's the midpoint between the main spindle and the subspindle. So I like to adjust my tool change position to give us a little bit of clearance from that subspindle. And this is why I'm using Z minus 210 here and not Z0. But most machine shops tend to use Z0, but if you've got tools that's sticking out too far, just bear it in mind that we can change that Z position 
to do a tool change away from the tail stock or sub spindle. So since we have coolant on, we can now turn it off with MO9. We can turn off the main spindle with MO5. And I always finish my sequences on an optional stop, so MO1. This way we can press the optional stop button on the machine controls if we need to inspect our parts at this point. So that's the center drill. And I've gone through this rather quickly here, but the next section we want to look at is the peck drilling cycle. And the peck drilling cycle is exactly the same apart from a few lines of code. So let's have a look and compare the two together. So this is our sensor drill cycle and the peck drill cycle that I've written for the same part. So I'm going to go over and look at the differences between these two sections of code to show you that almost all drilling cycles are the same apart from just a few lines. So of course the line where our tool is different because we're using a different tool. So instead of calling tool three, I'm calling tool four and also referring to the section four in the offset table with 04 there. And our tool search number, our N number there, I'm also keeping the same as our tool. So this way, if we search for N3 and push the down arrow on our FANUC controls, we will find the center drill. If we search for N4, we will find the PEC drill cycle. Another thing that's different is the spindle speed. Now, I've not um, declared what material that it is we're cutting here. So the speeds and feeds are purely made up numbers. They're not calculated for any particular material. But because we're using a larger drill than our sensor drill, it's going to cut slower on any material. So um, I've used S600 here to slow our spindle speed down because we are using a larger drill. So this is the line I want to talk about. This is the interesting line here. Before on our sensor drill, we just use point to point programming with GO1, which is a perfectly acceptable way to drill a hole. But if we need to peck drill, if our hole's a little bit deeper, if we're having swarf issues there, if we need to use a pecking cycle, the G83 here is our peck drill cycle on a lathe. So let's go over our peck drill cycle and see how this works. So we're gonna start off with G83, which is our call for our peck drill. So this tells the machine that we intend to peck drill with following information on this line. Now our Z depth here, Z minus 25. Now the thickness of our part we're going through here is 20 millimeters. So I've gone through an extra five millimeters for some clearance at the back and also to allow for the angle at the front of the drill. Because the drill was measured at zero on the end point. And if we just drill down to Z20, we're not gonna drill right through that part because we have that lead angle at the front of our drill there. So we need to go through a little bit deeper just to cover that. Now we're also allowing for a parting off blade on the back end of this as well. So we can go a little bit deeper and the parting off blade will clean up any um, mess from our drill there. It will clean up that angle and any overstep. So we can play around with this once we've parted the, the part off to see if our bar has a dimple in it from that drill and we can pull it back a little bit if needed. So our R value here, this is the retract value. So after each peck, the drill is gonna retract back to two millimeters in front of our part or whatever we've set up datum. So that's why we have R 2.0 here. Now the key value on this cycle is our depth of peck. So each peck, we're going to cut six millimeters of material then come back to two millimeters clearance from the part. And then the machine will automatically wrap it back in normally around five and a half millimeters, depending on how it's set up in the parameter, and then start cutting again for that next six millimeters. So we're gonna take six millimeter cuts each time, then the drill, drill is going to retract out, and then go back in and start cutting. And it's gonna keep doing this until we reach our full Z depth of minus 25 millimeters. Now, just like using the GA1 line, we also have to state a feed rate here. So I'm using F0.1 this time, but we always need to state a feed rate whenever we are cutting and using a controlled command such as a peck drill cycle. Now, once we finish the cycle, we use G80 to cancel the cycle. Because it is a cycle, we have to cancel it. Now, if you remember back in the beginning of this video, I mentioned about our G80 on our safety line. Now, that's why this is important. Because if we decide to stop the machine halfway through this peck drill cycle, and we restart it again, the machine is automatically gonna believe it's still within inside the cycle. So by adding G80 to our safety line, as well as after our peck drill cycle, it makes sure that this is not active 
when we are using different commands around the machine. For example, if we decided to rerun a different tool, it would automatically think we're still in a drilling cycle and the machine can act a bit weird. So by adding it in the safety line, it makes sure that all these cycles are canceled before we run each individual sequence. So just like the center drill, once the PEC drill cycle has completed, we can wrap it away to a safe working distance and I'm using five millimeters as my safe distance here. Now, before we add the MO9 on a separate line, we can also add it on a same line as any other line of G-code. So we can add MO9 here, or we can add it on its own line. It doesn't matter. So once we move to a safe working distance, we're now safe to retract our tool back home. So again, I'm calling the machine data with G53. I'm going to X0, which this time won't be our center line of our parts because we've switched to the machine datum. It's going to send it home to its home position or its tool change position. And again, I'm demonstrating how we can change the Z position of our home tool change position um, here with the Z minus 210 like before. So MO5 stops our spindle and MO1 is our optional stop. So that's how I go about programming both a sensor drill and a PEC drilling cycle. Now the PEC drilling cycle can get much more complicated than this. We can add a lot more information. We can even add custom parts to our cycle by using I, J, and K. So we can change the depth of PEC the deeper we go. Now there's more information about this over on my website in my CNC Lathe programming course where I go into this in much, much more detail and just talk about every single kind of cycle and all the different options we can use to change and customize those cycles. So thank you for watching this video. And if you want to know more about what I do, and that's Teach G-Code, CAD CAM, Machine Shop Maths, etc., pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com.